So here we are outside the new safe confinement at Chernobyl Power Plant. Simon Evans is with me. Project managed this remarkable feat of engineering for what? I've been working with the bank now for nine years. What exactly is its function? People tend to think of it as purely confinement, but it is confining and it is reducing radiation levels and radiation emissions from the old facility. But more importantly than that, it gives the capacity to start taking apart the old reactor with a very, very complex decommissioning set of equipment in there that will allow you to start taking apart the old sarcophagus over many, many decades, because this facility has a lifetime of 100 years. Give me some of the statistics. It's a magnificent uh, bit of engineering. Uh, it's 36,000 tonnes, it's 108 metres high, it's 157 metres wide. It would encapsulate the whole of St Paul's Cathedral, the Statue of Liberty, and it's three times the weight of the Eiffel Tower. In the next 100 years, they're going to be dismantling, essentially, the old reactor. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, dismantlement is something that will take place in many complex stages and it's something that the Ukrainians have indicated to us they're very determined to make an early start on with the facilities. The first part is to dismantle what's known as the unstable structures of the old object shelter, um, which are at risk of further collapse. Once you get down to then more complicated areas, then that's an issue that's going to have to be studied over the next decades as to how you're going to deal with it. But the crucial fact is that for the first time since the accident, they have the capacity to even start thinking about how to do that in a safe and secure environment. Brilliant. So um, I think uh, what we'll do is we'll organise an interview in maybe 100 years and we can see how it's coming along. Here we are in what was once a thriving town of Pripyat. We are actually standing in what was the stadium. If you look down here, I'll get turn the camera around and you can just see this was actually the football pitch, uh, believe it or not. And so you can just see how overgrown it has become. This town is, well, fascinating in many ways. It was 50,000 people lived here. With me now is Roman. You say your second name because I can't get it right, I'm afraid. It's Matyukin. 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 Okay, thanks very much, Roman. Um, Roman, uh, well, you're a bit too young to remember the actual explosion, but as a, as a citizen of Kiev, what do you and your friends, what does Chernobyl mean to you? Well... When I was a kid, up until middle school, I wouldn't say it was too much of a big deal. You know, my family and families of my friends would not talk about it. You know, we wouldn't have like special days when the, the anniversaries of the accident would be would take place. But then in the middle school geography lessons and when people started telling and explaining how big of a catastrophe this was and how it influenced the Kiev, the city itself, and also the countries around Ukraine, when you realize the scale, that's when you start to talk about it and you start to get interested just to understand how it affected the environment and the ecology. And, I mean, it's a very important point, isn't it? Because uh, at the time, uh, not that much was known uh, about what was going on here. Um, I mean, later on, you know, as you said, you were growing up, did, did the fear of radiation and contamination, did that kind of grow or was it just right, that was in the past? No, I would say I would say that stood in the past because, well, me and my friends and my family are all right. No one got affected by any kind of radiation, and it was it was never an issue for anyone who lived in Kiev. And indeed, you were telling me earlier that um, your granddad uh, he was actually from Pripyat. Yes, he was from Pripyat indeed, but he was evacuated. He never took part in any kind of jobs related to. Uh, battling the uh, incident but that that's probably because he worked for the television and knowing how the soviets wanted to keep it a secret and to put it and uh, to look as if a minor accident no wonder they took anyone who had relation to journalism or tv away as soon as possible i mean it is you know interesting that you're talking about the tv and it's the popularity i guess because of the tv shows and documentaries that are on at the moment it's becoming uh, a lot more well, I suppose popular. I mean, you only have to look down here. A group has just arrived of tourists. Um, and, you know, this is becoming more and more of a, well, I suppose, an issue. How do you feel about, it? you know, this kind of sacred town um, in lots of ways uh, becoming a tourist attraction? It's like a Disneyland almost, isn't it? Well, it honestly strikes me that people are excited to come here. I don't see anything excited here. I mean, you come to a town which was blooming and growing, which was a very like rich town the average age was 30 years old it's a very young town and you had all kinds of scientists you had good jobs people were just doing well here and then this happens and basically erases the whole thing from 
the map of the world. You know, everyone has to go away. There's nothing exciting about it. If you come here, for me, it's just depressing. The only exciting thing, well, probably the the arch itself, but because it's an engineering wonder and how it was built. Well, maybe the Duga and the early warning system, just because it's something unusual and you don't have this anywhere around in the world. But coming here, I don't understand how that can be. Roman, thank you very much for that segue, because that leads me on nicely to finish up um, and to promote our wonderful documentary that we have. It'll, you can see it on our YouTube channel. A fascinating bit of work. And we also have a podcast on at the moment about Chernobyl. So listen, it's been great uh, talking to you. I hope you've enjoyed this trip around uh, Chernobyl and the Pripyat, and we hope to see you again soon. Thank you. 